pure shooting awesomeness. I present to you the Hubin GK1 PCP semi-automatic pistol. Let me walk you through all that makes this pistol so cool. And I gotta say, everything is high quality on the GK1, starting with the hard case it comes in. There is a user manual with some important pointers stapled to the front cover, spare parts properly listed to avoid any confusion, some Allen keys and a fill probe, and the shadow carbon fiber suppressor by Huben, designed to complement all their guns, and one that's compact, lightweight and efficient, just like the GK1 itself. Top-notch walnut grip, with some nice checkering and very comfortable design. And that's coming from a guy who usually prefers the polymer or plastic alternatives. The gun comes with an 8.3-inch barrel, tips the scales at only 2.6 pounds and has an overall length of 12.8 inches. The air cylinder volume is 85 cubic centimeters and I think it's made of titanium just like the one on the K1 bullpup because it has a fuel pressure of 350 bar and some very good looking carbon fiber coating. The manometer dial goes all the way to 40 megapascals or 400 bar. The safe fuel pressure of 350 is indicated and this is a good time to mention that this gun is not regulated. I'd say it's like that for obvious reasons. To save room in the air tank and have a pistol shooting at high power levels for a PCP of that size. Half an inch UNF thread at the muzzle, nicely protected and giving you the possibility to mount not only the supplied Huben Shadow, but just about any other air gun moderator you would wish to install on the gun. Magazine locking lever on the left side, just like on the K1 you need to open it in order to rotate the fixed 17-shot magazine when loading it. And you should close it carefully without slamming it to avoid causing any damage to your pistol. On the right hand side you have the old plastic loading gate by Huben, which I must admit I've never been a fan of. The guys at Wolfie Group came up with a much better 3D printed solution that I like a lot. And replacing the stock loading gate with a new one comes down to unscrewing two hex screws and takes no more than a minute. With it installed, you don't need to apply pressure on your soft alloy projectiles and potentially deform them when loading them in the magazine. You can load two or three slugs or pellets at a time and even unload your magazine after shooting to safely store your gun. Right above the pistol grip at the back you can find two bolts for adjusting the two-stage trigger of the gun. The one to the right is for the first stage and the one to the left is for the second stage. Bear in mind that they adjust only the weight of both stages and not the length of pull. And just like with any other gun, if you decide to play with those two bolts, do some dry fire testing to make sure the trigger is not too light. Very good iron sights, adjustment for windage and elevation, and green fiber optic at the front. At this point I couldn't help it any longer, so I went straight to some fun shooting at 15 yards. There was a good reason for my lack of accuracy on the last target. I wanted to record this, but at the same time my action camera mount was blocking the view to the front side of the pistol, so I couldn't aim properly. No excuses here, I'm sure most of you would shoot this gun much better than I did. Right after that I made use of the dovetail on the GK1 and mounted the Vector Optics Frenzy Red Dot sight, which made things much easier and enabled me to shoot offhand at a longer distance of course. Thank you. 
but I wanted to go all the way and install a full-fledged scope on the pistol, the compact and lightweight Vector Optics Veyron 4 to 16 by 44 first focal plane, the version with the new and much better in my opinion illuminated reticle. You're about to see a 10-shot group at 40 yards with the Edgun 25.4 grain Diabolos at an average of 865 feet per second. Oddly enough, the first shot turned out to be a flyer here. At this power setting, the gun gives me 30 consistent shots from 330 down to 175 bar, which is more than great coming from a gun of that size, weight and barrel length. Later that day, the GK1 had its first outing, putting it to a different kind of test – shooting pest birds. Right after the first shot, I realized that placing accurate shots with a scoped pistol is more challenging than I expected. Even at the range when shooting this gun from a fixed and stable position, meaning a shooting table and the rest, I noticed that zeroing this gun for accuracy with a scope was not an easy task. Probably because it's a pistol and it was never meant to be shot with a scope, it's not a bullpup or a carbine that you can properly shoulder. And that's exactly the reason because of which I couldn't make some nice video recordings on my first three shots on live targets with this gun, even though the shots themselves were successful. I did hit all three Corvid targets, but failed to keep the gun steady enough after each shot and record some proper scope cam footage. I'm just too used to shouldering the gun I'm shooting, I guess. So I came up with a simple solution of mine and also a cheap one. Overall cost 8 or 9 dollars US using household items. I made a stock of my own. And something tells me that I'm not the only one thinking in this direction and the big players from the market are gonna come up with a stock of their own pretty soon. This is what I'm talking about. As you can see, a pretty basic and rudimentary solution, but it does the trick. Those of you who follow me on Instagram have already seen my posts there. This is a piece of aluminium that we bent the right way, some padding here at the buttstock, and it's rubber coated. We used a heat gun to make the rubber coating stick. Also, a new and slightly longer bolt. Make sure you get the right thread, guys. Also, this makes even easier to carry around this extremely compact and lightweight hunting and pest control platform. You can hold it right here, if you will. You can even hold it here. You can even grab it by the stock walnut pistol grip, like this. Extremely lightweight and portable, like I said. There were two sky rods, I think they were like a couple, and I got the first one up there. But it made it all the way to the adjacent roof, so there had to be a follow-up. The good thing is that the second one followed it, and it found its demise too. A 
I spotted a dove. Just gonna get into position now. Yeah, I'm gonna rest my gun on this tree right here. Okay. Oh, this is gonna be a trick shot. Got him. It could have been a beautiful sunset if it weren't for the clouds. Oh, boys and girls, it's overcast and it's getting dark early in the Northern Hemisphere in winter time. It is what it is. I just hope that there is enough light for my camera to pick this up. This is what 43 pounds of pure awesomeness, lightweight and compact look like. Also, let me tell you that this gun is capable of much more. It can reach up to about 80 something foot pounds in 25 caliber. This is not something that I'm comfortable with. I don't need those power levels. Plus I need the shot count. And stay tuned because there will be more of this little beast coming soon. At another permission of mine, one that is still target rich, because as you could tell, this one here at the grain bins is completely depleted, or you may call it clean. It's been a month since my last visit and I found two sky rods only. To be honest with you, I think they were just passing by. You know, I don't believe I've stated that permission of mine until so late before. Well, you stayed hungry today, didn't you? I'm sorry, darling, we couldn't retrieve any of the catch, which amounted to three birds only. Maybe you can climb on that roof and get it yourself.